Hi, and a very warm welcome to your next Pilates class with me, Greg Perry. Now, if you've been following the work we've done already, you'll know that we need to maintain momentum, maintain a strength and flexibility. And today I thought you might find it interesting to follow some more traditional Pilates exercises. Now remember, whenever we're working together, it's very important that you have no pain, especially in the joints, you know, the neck and the shoulders, in the hips, zero discomfort in your lower back, that's really important. But I wanna keep the pressure away from the knees and the feet as well. Remember that you don't have to do all the exercises, just do as much as you can without causing any pain or discomfort. It'll work wonders. The key to progress is actually in the flexibility, and I know you're raring to go, so let's see how today's exercises suit you. I'm gonna enjoy it, so join me and we'll get started. Welcome. I know you're raring to get into the next Pilates class. Me too. I love sharing these exercises with you because it's one of the ways we can make sure that we can maintain a healthy body and perhaps with a bit of luck, a healthy mind. That means being more relaxed, a little bit more calm, a little bit more centered, much more creative. And we'll see if we can overcome some of the stress that's floating around out there in the background. Now, whether you're starting Pilates or whether you've been doing this for a long time, we always begin the session with a little bit of a warm-up. We need some stretching. And as I said in the introduction, all the stretches have to be super comfortable. I'm a big fan of starting with the upper body. Why is that, Craig? Good question. It's one of the places where we store a lot of stress, tension, and pressure. Most of the time, you're not aware of it until the neck or the shoulders begin to produce some aches and pains and problems. So this is a good place for us to change our posture, change how we feel, is a great intro for the exercises. What I'm going to do with my feet is I'm going to leave them just about underneath the hips. Don't worry about great precision here, it's just about being in a very, very comfortable position. One of the things I'd like to do though is to relax. I know it sounds strange, we're about to exercise, but the more you can relax, the easier the process is going to feel. Now, when I relax my feet and the knees and the legs, I'm gonna get into neutral spine, to remember that, where we make this subtle rotation in the pelvis. It's like we've got a broom handle going through the hips. Can you imagine that? And we're rotating around this axis. We're lifting up a little bit at the front, a little bit down at the back. Don't exaggerate. If you're new to it, it might take a little bit of practice to get the pelvis to move into the right position. What I've just done is pull the abs in very gently along the belt line. Didn't affect my breathing, didn't affect my voice. But this is the part most people forget. It's the derriere. We need to relax the butt muscles, the glutes. Keep them relaxed. At this stage, we don't need them. In fact, because the weight is in the core muscles deep inside, once you relax, get into neutral spine, the body just feels much lighter. For me, the big issue is the way that you can gently open the chest, relax those shoulders. Do you know why? You probably remember, this is an instant way for you to switch off some of that stress you've been carrying with you. It's in the shoulders. When I move them back, it's very subtle, it's not exaggerated. And I release the shoulders. I just stepped into a whole new world. I turn down the stress and I'm starting to feel much more relaxed. And that should help with the stretches. I'm gonna pick up both hands, because it's easy. Don't worry about the relative heights, one may be higher than the other. I just want you to feel relaxed. Now, if you're a little bit more experienced, I'd love you to relax both shoulders and see if you can lift the ribs a fraction. I remember when I first started doing these classes, I used to lift my shoulders and there was no movement in the ribs. But with a little bit of practice and persistence, the ribs lifted without lifting my shoulders too much. That's a good sign of progress. Oh, check those glute muscles. Make sure they're nice and relaxed. Just start by turning your palms towards the ceiling, breathe out, pull the tummy muscles in gently. If you can bring the ribs a little closer, that'll be wonderful. And you just push the hands out to the sides. Remember when you do this, you might hear or feel a little click around the neck as you move the pressure away from the shoulder, shoulder blades, neck, my goodness, it feels good. If 
you keep breathing. And I would really love you to keep breathing. You might feel the stretch through the pectoral muscles opening up this part of the upper body. Feels good. You might even want to breathe a little more deeply and feel the expansion going down to the floating ribs here. It does feel good. Next stretch, it's so easy. Legs are relaxed, hands are moving up. I said it was easy. So what you to pull the tummy muscles in and just start to push the fingertips up and see if you can lift the ribs a little higher. Now we're getting a stretch through the ribs, should feel good. My back's getting a little bit longer, that feels good. But you know, because I'm lifting my ribs, I've got a stretch in my waist and in these internal oblique muscles and it feels good. Fantastic. So I want you to bring both hands down to the start position. I'm gonna do that famous palm flexing exercise that I know you'll love. So because we can't be together today, we're not going to ignore the importance of this stretch. Don't need to exaggerate. Just flex the wrists, pull the tummy in, push the palms out. Have you noticed the shoulders are not up here around my ears? They're fairly low and natural, but I have lifted my ribs a fraction, so I've got some good core pressure from those important muscles. Remember, you can't see them, but I know you can feel them. Then to make this complete, we bring the fingers in very gently towards the ears. Now remember, it mustn't be uncomfortable. We normally hold it long enough for you to feel a little bit of an electrical buzz. An electrical buzz? It's like a tingling between the palms. And this is a good sign we're releasing some of the stress and tension and muscular pressure in the arms, in the shoulders, in the neck, in the trapezius muscles. Feels good. So that's beautiful. And then I'm just going to release the fingers, the wrists, the elbows and shoulders, let those hands float down. And I've got to tell you something. That feels pretty good. I like that. It should give you the feeling that the chest is more open, the shoulders are relaxed. Gosh, you might even be feeling a little bit more relaxed. Would you like to join me for a gentle side stretch? You look ready. So I'm gonna get my feet a little bit wider apart. Nothing exaggerated today. We're gonna to do things very gently. Most people find it more comfortable. Turn the knees and toes a little bit out to the side. What I'm gonna do is gonna just gently bend this knee. This leg is not super straight, it's slightly bent too. I'm gonna to pull my tummy in and bring the elbow down onto the knee. That's comfortable. I'm gonna see if I can get my body a little bit straighter, hips and shoulders more lined up. I bring this hand up to the ceiling, and as you breathe out, just bring the hand over the top and just push it. If you wanna make this other leg a little bit longer too, go right ahead, hold it for a few moments, enjoy the stretch. Sometimes you get a click and a pop, but no pain. Then I'll reverse the process. Bring this hand back, pull the tummy in, bring the arm off the knee, and we're gonna rinse and repeat on the other side. It's very easy. Bending the knee, this leg can be a little bit bent too. Gonna to put the elbow just down onto the leg like I'm taking a rest. Gonna line up my hips and shoulders. Bring this hand to the ceiling. Are you still breathing? If you like, you can gently stretch this other leg and bring the arm all the way over and just stretch. I'm gonna hold it for a few moments. You can breathe, you can relax, think happy thoughts, and just enjoy this gentle stretch. It's not too severe, not too extreme. Then we can bring this arm back, pull the tummy in, gently bring the body back. Whew, how's that feel? Yeah, it's just simple stretching. Now what I'd like to do is keep the feet where they are, not an extreme position. And what I'm gonna do, turn those knees and toes a little bit further to the side. I would like to rotate the pelvis into neutral spine. Pull the tummy, lift the ribs. All I want you to do is see if you can push the palms onto the floor. Did you see what I did there? Did you catch? I bent my knees. I made it easy. I'm cheating like crazy. Now from this position, you have some support from the hands, from the arms. Just very gently see if you can make the legs a little bit straighter. Doesn't matter how straight they, they seem to go, you can leave them slightly bent, but I want you to just gently bring the nose a little bit closer to the floor. Still breathing. Then we're going to relax those knees. Pull the tummy in. We're gonna bring the body all the way back up. You are now officially stretched. And I think this could be a good moment for us to follow the advice of James Brown and get down. You ready to get down with me? <laughs> okay, let's just bring the feet together. The usual way for us to get down onto the floor, and I know for the experienced people, this must seem very, very, very obvious. But if you're new to it, we need to proceed very, very carefully. So it's like we're about to dive onto the floor, <laughs> but we're not going to dive. I'm gonna relax my knees, 
rotate the pelvis, lift the ribs, pull the tummy in, and gently curl the spine. This is important, not straight, it's curving. I always love this feeling my ribs are getting a little bit closer to the belt line. Then I can put my hands on the legs and it just helps me to take all the pressure off my back. As I follow the line of the legs, I'm bending my knees to make it easier. I can put one hand down, two hands down, walk the hands forwards, and I have just made contact. Now, because it's such a beautiful day, I think we should do some push-ups. What do you think? You're in agreement. Now, I know how much you love push-ups, but the good news is today, we're gonna to make them a little bit easier. As usual, please remember that we want to avoid any pain or strain, particularly in the wrists and elbows and shoulders. Now, to make it a bit easier for you, I'm gonna move one knee back, both knees back quite away. My shoulders are pretty much above the hands, but my hands are actually slightly wider than the shoulders. Tummy's pulling in, and just gently go as low as you feel comfortable. You don't have to go all the way. I want you to hold it for a couple of heartbeats. Gently push out. Now, we need to include some breathing with this, so let's breathe in as we go down. Breathe out to the bottom. Squeeze the abs. Gently push back up. Is that okay? Of course, I'm gonna pull the tummy in. Breathe out, squeeze. Keep that pressure in the abdomen. Gently bring the body back. So it should feel pretty easy. Just gently down, holding it for a few moments, and pushing back up. Is that okay? You enjoying this? Can we do a few more? You look so enthusiastic today. We're gonna to bring it down and hold it for a few moments. Push it back up. It's a really easy push up, but you know you can go to the halfway position. This will also work. No strain, no pain. You can choose the level that works best for you. Pushing back up. Could we do three more? Three more? Yeah, okay. I think you're getting stronger. Just down and gently pushing back. Keep those abs in. Keep the pelvis gently rotated. Now, I don't know if you can notice, but the glutes are relaxed. They're supposed to be. That minimizes pressure in my lower back and it makes the whole execution of the exercise so much easier. Less strain, less pain. Can we hold it for a heartbeat? Sure. Then we gently push back. I bring my knees closer to the center of the mat before I gently. We always use that word, don't we? Gently. Just sit down towards the heels. Don't go too far. Be super careful with the knees. It's not necessary to push the heels all the way down. Your knees will tell you how far to go. Just stretch the arms out. And I think we'll take a break. I want to say a break. I mean, we're going to take an opportunity here to breathe more deeply. Oh, feels good. Breathe that all the way. Superb. From here, I think we need to go for a nice, refreshing swim. What do you think? So let's bring the body back up. And once the hips have passed the position of the knees, we can gently bring the body down. Oh. I'm very tempted to have a nap. No, we're gonna do some exercise. Now I wanna do this very gently with you today. And I want you to keep the chin or the cheek on your hands. I've got my hands just gently crossed there, relaxed. My arms are, forearms are pretty much in a very, very much, very in a comfortable position. And then all I have to do is get my feet to the same position where they're about as wide as the hips. And we're gonna pull the tummy in and just lift one leg. Now I've seen people do this in an extreme position, but I won't just hold it there for a few moments and gently put the leg down and then repeat. Now we've been talking about not using the glutes. You're probably gonna be using those derriere muscles and that's fine. And putting it down and lifting it up and putting it down. Remember, it's got to be comfortable. Nice and easy. Just lifting up. And putting it down. And up. You've probably seen people use the arms as well. But, you know, I'm a little bit concerned about the flexibility of this. So I want to make this pretty easy. Now, if you feel like doing more, go right ahead. But, you know, we only need a, maybe half a dozen movements. Just to get a feeling for those hip, flex, hip flexors are working. And we've got a nice reaction from the abdominal muscles. Legs don't have to be super straight. You can keep the knees slightly bent. And it's just a nice way of working the lower back in a very, very safe way because you've got no pressure in the back muscles. And we're good. I'd like to stretch that out. So I'm gonna get my feet a little wider, put the hands underneath the shoulders, push the shoulder blades down, put the tummy off the floor, 
float back up. My knees are just about the right width apart for me to settle down into child's pose. Oh yeah. But I want to stretch through my shoulders and shoulder blades. And that feels good. Gentle breath in. Oh, and we're back. How are you feeling? I just said it was going to be a bit easier, but these are classical traditional Pilates exercises. Most of us have done them together at one stage or another, so I'm hoping you're in very familiar territory. I'd like to do another exercise on the floor. So I'm going to roll back down, put my hands back where I left them before. Hello guys, so they look comfortable. Cheek or chin on the hands, resist the temptation to fall asleep. What I want to do is see if I can just make this exercise a little bit more dynamic, just keep the head nice and long. Did you hear what I said? Move the neck into a longer position. We're going to keep the forehead down. Lift one arm and lift one leg. Gently park and repeat with the other side. That's good. And just lifting and releasing. Lifting and releasing. Lifting and releasing. Normally keep the head down, remember. Just lift. One more, ready? Lift and release, lift and release. Just as we did before, we're gonna bring those hands right underneath the shoulders, shoulder blades down, turn me off the floor. We can float back up, and now we're gonna sit down once again onto the heels and just breathe. Fabulous. Are you ready to do some focused, concentrated work? for the abs. And I've got to say this, but you know, we even repeat this message in quite advanced classes. The area that I'm always concerned about is your lower back. If your lower back feels stressed or tense or God forbid painful, I need you to stop right away. This is all about making sure we're using the core and not your back muscles. It's pretty easy once you're using the core. It's not good if you have any tension in the lower back. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sit, oh, it looks so comfortable. Gonna get my feet a little bit apart, maybe just about as wide as my mat. And then I'm gonna curl the lower back. You see what I'm doing? I'm moving from this position where the back is really too straight and I'm curving it by pulling the abs in, squeezing those muscles in towards the spine. You don't need a huge reaction, just enough pressure to feel that the body's being held here. This is a clue, you can still breathe and do stuff. For the more advanced students, you can bring your ribs a little bit closer, get more traction from the muscles just underneath your rib cage. I love to bring my ribs a little bit closer to the belt line, helps the lower back to be protected, it's curved, and all the weight is in the back. Now I'm going to make it easier because I'm going to stretch my hands out to the front. And these are used as a kind of a simple counterweight. But I would like to lift my chin a fraction, not too far, I don't want any compression in my neck, just a little bit. And as I breathe out and I squeeze the abs in, I'm gonna curl back just to here. Now, I'm lifting up this low point and I'm bringing the ribs down, so I'm squeezing. I'm gonna hold that for a few moments and ideally I wanna hold it long enough for these muscles to start to shake. Then I just gently bring the body back. That is subtle. It's no great movement involved, but I can just lift my chin, pull the abs in, breathe out squeeze and curl. I'm not putting any pressure in the head, neck, back, shoulders. It's just in the core. As I pull the abs in, it's very subtle, but I'm making them work. And if you hold it long enough, they will shake. There's another clue. My legs are completely relaxed. That's an indicator my back isn't joining in. I can bring the body back just a little bit. Take that deep breath in, breathe out, squeeze. The hands are out front, they're acting as a counterweight. I can squeeze, keep the chin just a centimeter higher. No pressure in the head, neck, back or shoulders. You might even find this comfortable. So squeeze more deeply, get some real traction from the abs. Remember, when they start to shake, it's a good sign that you're putting them under sufficient pressure to make them work more efficiently. Bringing it back. Subtle, huh? Let's do a couple more. Breathing out, squeeze, bring those ribs down. Resist the temptation of going too far, because this is when people tend to use the back. By accident, these muscles tense up. Here is enough for this exercise, just here. But super squeeze in, in, in towards the spine to get the reaction you're looking for, gently bringing it back. We do one more, because I can see you're having fun. We're gonna breathe out, 
squeeze, bring it down, lock and load and hold. You can see the hands, the arms, the shoulders are totally relaxed. I'm not using my chest, all the pressure is below the ribs. And you know, it's such a, an interesting feeling that you can put this much pressure into the abs without going into an extreme position. It's fascinating, isn't it? I'm glad you agree. Now from here, we're gonna gently bring the body back and we're going to bring the feet together, relax the legs, bring your ribs forwards and gently up, get the back a little bit straighter from this position, breathe out, pull the abs in and just roll forwards as far as you feel comfortable. I'm not gonna go too far and if you feel a little bit too much resistance in the legs, remember, it might be because your legs are too long. It could happen. If you feel your legs are too long, you can always bend the knees. The mission is to lift and bring the ribs a little bit closer into the knees, gently stretch along the legs. I've worked with so many people who put the knees to one side to neutralize the position. Doesn't matter, you choose a position that feels super comfortable. If the legs are cooperative, we can lift the ribs and roll a little bit further, but don't force, don't bounce, don't push, just relax. And the stretch should help you to feel that the lower back is just moving into a slightly longer position. Feeling good? Excellent. What I'd like to do now is to bring the body back up. And I'm going to bend my knees. I'm going to put one elbow down. Oh yeah. I'm going to put the other elbow down. I'm going to lift up my knees. I want to explore this position for a moment because when I'm lying down like this, I want to make sure my lower back is gently pushing down into the mat. Can you do that? So imagine we're lying down, we've raised the knees, even though the knees are bent. And your mission is to push the lower back down. Why? It's to make sure you don't have any strain or pressure in that critical lower back area, using the core and everything will be fine. Now, we've got the elbows on the ground, but I don't want my head, neck and shoulders relaxed. And I need you to lift the chin just a fraction because the instinct is to push the head forward instead of having it nicely relaxed. You should be able to breathe fairly easily. I'm still bringing my ribs a little bit closer towards the belt line, just down in here. And if your lower back feels uncomfortable, take a break. Strangely, if you feel that your neck or shoulders are, are getting a little bit tense, just lie down flat on the mat. Whew. Are you enjoying this class? <laughs> well, if you want to get the full experience and have access to all the exercises and all the fun that we have when we're working together, all you have to do is go to my Patreon page. You can find the link in the description below and then you will be able to get the full experience. So if you're ready, let's do it right now.